you saved a woman's life. Do you want to get into uh, that I, one? I, I, I call it that. Oh. Goldie may not. Uh, more uh, we were, we were, I was with my buddy Joe Cummins. He was a Navy SEAL. Okay. And he just getting ready to quit. They asked him to stay at the uh, SEAL Team 6. He said no. And they offered him like 20 grand to stay for another year. And But he said he wanted out. He was there since he was a kid. And mm-hmm. He wasn't that old anyway to start with. And uh, we were walking. We were down to Beach Gomers. And this is in San Diego? San Diego. Yeah, because there's lots of military training yeah. there, right? And uh, <coughs> we're down there having some beers on Sunday afternoon. Everybody goes there on Sunday. And they have a little rock and roll plane and all that. Mm-hmm. We go there, and we're coming back to our vehicle. And uh, there, was, uh, there was a whole pile of people around. And there was, uh, so we go up and see what's going on. And the guy, somebody said, yeah, a guy's beating a girl up. So there was a, there was a, a pickup truck and a van. And so the guy had his door open in his pickup, and he had the slider door open back in the van. So you couldn't see the girl mm-hmm. until you pushed the doors like this. So when we go, she was all blood, right? So I grabbed the guy, threw him down. And uh, back then, they didn't have cell phones. Mm-hmm. So the people didn't even bother trying to call the cops till they seen yeah. till they seen the girl. So my buddy Joe, he goes, he yells at them, call the cops. And so the girl, she gets really mad. So I got the guy down, and she wants to get at the guy. So she comes running right at me from the back. Pushes me forward. I hit my head on on the asphalt. I'm stunned a bit. Got a cut here, and all of a sudden this guy gets up, and she says, "Ah, the guy's got a gun." Oh. So I'm I'm panicked. I ain't getting shot again because I ain't get, coming out of this alive. Yeah. So I, <laughs> I jumped the guy. He's in his he's in his pickup truck now. He's got a big buck knife. Oh, okay. So the first oh, time he wow. he, he he goes up block it like this. He slashes my arm. Second time he cuts me again. Then I, I grab him here, and he was cutting my arm, my forearms. Mm-hmm. Then I had to grab the, bar, the 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 knife like that, and I one punched him, split him right as soon as my fist hit his head, forehead, it split open. Mm-hmm. He went right down, and before I even my hand went back to my side, that guy was back up on his feet. Holy shit! And when uh, she said he had a rifle, we all ran, and the people that were around all ran, and it was a little grassy knoll. And I said, I can't run no more. I was just pumping blood out of my... Yeah. And my buddy Joe Cummins, a Navy SEAL, he put a tourniquet on it in the ambulance come. And uh, they, they called the SWAT team in and everything. Wow. That is incredible. <laughs> and then uh, when I was laying on the lawn, years later, I find out, this a couple years later, I find out, guess who walks by? He's a Hall of Famer. Who? Uh, Chris Chilios. Oh, okay. And I was laying on the lawn bleeding. And he said, is that Bill Goldthorpe? And I didn't who, even know. Who, who, who went by Chris Chilios? Yes. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> So this was uh, how, when, what year was that? Nineteen eighty. Oh, okay. So Chelios was playing. He was in just finished his first year junior. Okay. In uh, Moose Jaw. Okay. And he's and he was in San Diego. Well, he lived he, there. He lived yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. His family lived there. Oh wow. Yeah. They moved from Chicago to San Diego. Okay. And he was he was living there. So he just finished his first year junior, and he he was told anyway it was a legendary enforcer or whatever. Yeah. It was a guy who was actually lying there who had been in this altercation or whatever, and years later. <laughs> He said it was a conversation with Marty McSorley, if I'm not mistaken, because yeah. we have that in the book. And I asked Marty about it when I was just with him, just with Marty in Philly about six weeks ago for a Flyer alumni event. And uh, he says, oh, yeah, yeah, Chelly told me that. He walked right by wow. and saw all the commotion, all the paramedics there trying to... And the same detective, wasn't it, that came to your shooting? Was it the same guy? <laughs> well, he, he, no, he came to the house. Oh, he came to the house? Yeah, because I, I, I only stayed in the hospital until he sold me up. And how, and how many stitches, Goldie? Over 300. Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> in your fucking arms. Yeah. Yeah. That's My crazy. tricep, yeah. But like getting bit by a shark. Well, the guy's trying to stab him in the chest. Yeah. You know, gets his arm up, then grabs the knife. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, right. Had stitches all over the place. Yeah. That's like a pincushion. That's wild. And it's such a small world. The hockey community really is such a small world for for something like that. That with Chris Chelios to be popping by while that's going Freak, on. Freakish coincidence. Isn't that, isn't that weird? Well, we've got a yeah. few unbelievable coincidences in the book. That one, of course, is from a, the back end of a violence, a very violent story. Like that chapter itself, it's chapter 10. I call it Violence Comes to Gold because we detail both of those, which mm-hmm. are the two worst things and by far, obviously, that happened to him, shooting and stabbing. But... Uh, uh, to me, in my view, it's 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 aside from everything else. Chapter ten is a slam dunk reason why it'll be a movie. There's there's you, right. know, you can't you, get the fuck out of San Diego. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and what you did, right? You got the hell out of San Diego, I think, after yeah. that Goldie, right? Well, I kept bodybuilding, then it wasn't that long after I moved into Brunswick. Yeah, 